Approx 25,000 life science aspirants joined us for an exclusive webinar on the topic Free Workshop Tips to Crack CSIR Net, GATE, ICMR, DBT, TIFR, plus time management tips. The event commenced at 7 p.m. IST with an aim to impart knowledge and guidance to students who are aspiring for various bioscience national level entrance exams like CSIR Net, GATE, DBT, ICMR, TIFR and much more. Six biotechnica experts with decades of experience were brought together on one stage where they talked about the strategies to prepare for these biotech entrance exams along with time management tips. Biotechnica has been a pioneer in conducting such webinars in the past as well, enlightening the student community by giving them a motivational and strategical boost. This was one of the thousands of such webinars which were highly appreciated and applauded by all our attendees who benefited from the talk. We could not stop ourselves from sharing their valuable feedback with you all. This feedback is the backbone of Biotechnica which not only helps us to grow but also comes out with more innovative ideas to cater to our aspiring researchers. Also, students who somehow missed the webinar, no need to worry. Watch out the complete recording of the two hours of power-packed sessions in this video. We are sure it will be very much beneficial for your preparations. Watch it till the end. So students, am I audible to you? Please give me a heads up so that I can start with today's topic. Okay, and you're able to see the screen as well? All right, great. So today's talk is going to be on time management in competitive exams. Why before even going on to any competitive exam preparation, we are looking at this topic. So that important is time management. Okay, because it is not only during the exam it also has an importance throughout your entire preparation period so what is the importance of time management it reduces stress so when you want to learn something when you have a deadline when you have assigned a deadline to you to finish this topic within the stipulated period of time you will be much more stress-free and much more relaxed if you manage whatever time you have allotted yourself not only that you will be having all the happy hormones inside you by having a sense of achievement finishing something in time gives you absolute joy an absolute sense of sense of achievement will come more enthusiasm and more power to go forward you will be looking forward to complete the next task also within the stipulated time the next day it increases that is why your energy and also your productivity when you get a feeling that you were able to finish something in time it will enhance your productivity more and more every day isn't that what life is all about improving ourselves every day right achieving a goal so I need not tell you how wonderful it feels when you want to achieve something and you do achieve it right so in summary I can conclude that it is an absolutely essential life skill in everyday life okay but here we are talking about competitive exams yes we do have to compete and uh, to get a stable career we have to start with this competitive exams now I'm going to divide my talk into two sections that is planning your time during the preparation period of, a ex of an exam and then how you will manage your time during the exam. So I know CSIR is still six months away, we just finished with one but some more exams are popping up, the very recent one is GATE next month. So maybe the next portion is going to be helpful for you guys who are um, targeting for GATE, right? And those who have just begun their preparation for CSIR, maybe this is what you can take a take away from this class right so how do you plan your preparation time 
बेस्ट इज यू डिवाइड इन टाइम स्लॉट्स एंड दैट टू ऑन रोटेशन इन अ वीक सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन अ यू हैव डिसाइडेड टू स्टडी सम सेवन टू एट यूनिट्स फ्रॉम द एंटायर सिलेबस और सेवन टू एट सब्जेक्ट्स और सेवन टू एट टॉपिक्स सो असाइन डे स्लॉट्स फॉर यूनिट्स इन अ वीक सो एवरी डे दिस यूनिट आई विल डू और एवरी डे आई मीन ऑन मंडेज आई विल डू दिस टॉपिक ऑन ट्यूजडेज आई विल डू दिस टॉपिक एन अदर टॉपिक सो असाइन वंस यू हैव डन दैट देन असाइन आवर स्लॉट्स फॉर सब यूनिट्स इन अ डे सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर प्लानिंग टू स्टडी लेट्स ए सेल बायोलॉजी सो वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू स्टडी ओके आई एम गोइंग टू स्टडी इन द मॉर्निंग आवर्स अबाउट द मेम्ब्रेन स्ट्रक्चर एंड देन इन द लेटर हाफ ऑफ द डे आई एम गोइंग स्टडी द ऑर्गेनली पार्ट्स ओके सो दैट वे यू विल ऑलवेज बी यू इन अ हरी टू फिनिश फिनिश इट गोइंग टू द फिनिशिंग लाइन राइट यू वोट बी ऑल लूज थ्रू आउट द डे दैट ओके फाइन इट्स गोइंग लेट इट गेट प्रिपेयर ऑन इट्स ओन लेट मी टेक माई ओन स्वीट टाइम सो दैट डजेंट वर्क एक्चुअली आई एम नॉट आस्किंग यू टू सेट वेरी अनरियलिस्टिक गोल्स दैट यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू अचीव दैम एंड देन एट द एंड ऑफ द डे यू विल बी डिसार्ड एंड एंड स्टॉप इट ऑल द वे राउंड बट द बेस्ट वे इज टू कीप अ रियलिस्टिक गोल ओके हु विल डिसाइड दैट यू योर सेल्फ बेस्ड अपॉन योर केपेबिलिटीज Study not more than two units in a day, or you can keep two different subject itself in a day. So you can take Monday and Tuesday, and then you choose two subjects. For example, molecular biology and microbiology. So you study molecular biology in the morning hours on Monday also and Tuesday also, and you study microbiology in the afternoon hours on both those days. And then you do the same thing with two other units. Okay. this way what will happen you will not miss out on any particular subject you will not feel um, that you are only concentrating on only one subject okay that way you are giving your concentration and focus and parallelly running your other units as well divide time slots for different activities under a topic so now that you have given a particular time slot in a day as well first it was in a week then it was in a day now in a day that particular unit time that also you divide into four slots so what you are going to do like in the morning section you are going to study molecular biology now what you are going to do first slot just study the topic and understand the concept well in the second slot you have to go through some questions from the topic what you have just studied so for studying it you can either use the reference ppts which are taught in biotechnica class plus you can use the reference books as well okay so in the second slot you can go through some questions from the topic from previous year questions and make note of those sub topics which you are not able to solve or grasp so maybe you were not able to solve the question which was supposed to be from that topic which you have studied so make note of that sub sub topic some keywords will be there in the question which means that you need to go through those properly or if you have not uh, studied that at all you need to go through it right so try to solve more questions on those topics till the time you get correct answers and confidently develop conceptual clarity okay so keep solving questions is the key to all these things and at the end like how after a workout you have to uh, relax right you have to do a cool down session so it's revision i i call it the cool down session of a learning phase right so when you revise it you are kind of engraving all what you have learned in your brain kind of for a long time okay so whatever you have studied the previous day you just revise it the next day just a small bit so that you brush up and very quickly go through the topics which you have studied the previous day most students what do they do they don't know what they are going to face okay so you have to be aware of the question paper format how many sections are there what all uh marks are there marks distribution are there so this is just for net and gate um other faculty members are going to walk you through the other exams as well the marking system so how the marks are generally distributed you just know that for example your net consists of three sections so you have to know each section what is the individual marks and how many questions from individual sections you have to attend same for gate also you have numerical type questions you have mcq you have general aptitude you have one mark question you have two marks question so you have to know how ma how many you need to attend 
and what is the total marks that gives you an idea of what you are supposed to face and give puts you in a better position to manage your time well in the exam okay and while your preparation actually that is the most crucial phase right so train your brain for the d day how you do it for your exams so before exams learn how to manage your time so you get those top grades you have been working hard for so what you have to do is you have to set your priorities which topic you are less weak in which topic you want to revise more which topic can fetch you more marks so you set your own priorities with which you are aiming to clear the exam and accordingly you make a study schedule okay this comes at the end this end parts so whatever you have studied you have to keep revising them continuously okay so conduct lot of mock exam practice uh, from wherever source you can previous year question papers or whatever biotechnica mock tests they provide you so create the exam hall environment okay you you isolate yourself in a room keep a water bottle with you keep a pen keep a rough work and nothing else but the question paper if required take a print out of the paper and also you keep a clock with you okay that is what is important for the time management and have a habit of sleeping early and waking up early just a few days before the exams that will put you into a very productive mode when you are actually during the in the exam okay otherwise if you have a habit of waking up late say say around 8 or 9 o'clock and your exam starts around 10 or 10 30 like that so you may not be so much productive and you may your brains won't work the way you want them to be okay so these are just some small tips which actually helps you the next se session of my talk is what do you do with the time that you get in exams okay so you have planned your preparation you have prepared also well and now is the time for execution so i'm going to give you some efficient time management tips the first thing when you enter an exam hall is try to avoid the people who are panicking around you so you will see them very much fidgeting in their seat very distracted and having lots of stationary items around them having water bottle having uh, some snacks and very panicky state so try to just not look at them okay you close your eyes be calm so they will not help you out in any way whatever you have prepared that is what is going to help you through that is the first thing okay because when that happens your mind also starts panicking and that is when you lose out your precious time of your 3 hours start with scanning all the questions carefully and quickly plan which questions you are going to opt for yes you have to look out for the questions which you are planning you you should start with some easy ones okay and then you can speed up gradually so because if you start with the easy ones you will feel confident and when you can solve the easy ones quickly you will see that it's happening very quickly right so you can buy yourself some extra time for the difficult questions so when you solve those difficult questions you will feel that okay i have still time left so i can put in some effort and energy into it okay you will feel a lot safer to play around with time set a deadline for each section so every question paper has sections so accordingly i cannot generalize for any one over here but accordingly you do this for that you will need a watch i can start with the csir one so you have total three sections so under that you keep say for example one and a half hour for section c as they contain four marks questions and then you keep one hour for your part b because they contain to the point two marks questions and then last half an hour you can keep for some aptitude solving because i think solving 15 questions within 30 minutes is quite achievable and that too you are not solving all the 15 set your time frame such that you have at least 10 minutes left to go through the entire answer paper once you are done so after doing all this definitely you should be left with some 10 minutes or so so that you see that you have not left out any question so maybe some easy question you are missing out and you are missing out on a mark do not invest your time and energy that then you planned on a particular section this is a very crucial tip okay so if you have given a one and a half hour time for section c so if you have to attend 25 questions in that accordingly you divide 
90 minutes by 25 and how much ever time you are getting you should stick to that time for a particular question okay if it is taking more than that you leave it and move ahead later if you have time you can come back and again try to solve it it's not that how much time you are spending on a particular question you have to solve it somehow else you cannot move away you will think that i have already wasted 5 to 10 minutes of time but what if i'm not solving it that's okay because of, uh, in order to solve that you're missing out on a lot of other questions as well okay so it is advisable to uh, it is advisable to leave any question that you're uncertain about for the end so do not get struck and just move on that is the key for time management do not get struck you see the moment you feel it's taking time you just move on okay in case you go blank and your brain freezes so sometimes happen the things are just not coming to you so you simply begin writing anything just start scribbling something about the question or the topic or something you will see that your brain starts processing once again okay so you will soon start remembering more details so never panic always clarify what you are doing pay attention to the key terms and information okay so you can un if you uh, if you can you underline or you just uh, mentally pay attention to the keyword of the question which plays a big role in answering the question okay you would not believe how many people miss out on entering their exam details in the omr sheet correctly so they'll make a mistake and all that why to unnecessarily complicate things right so always keep that in mind the first thing so the moment you follow this tip number one you avoid panicking people around you and you stay calm and just keep solving questions these things will automatically come and the last tip is never leave an exam early try to utilize every minute of the exam if you have some time left again you start from the beginning and see if you have done all the things correctly but don't leave before the uh, stipulated time okay before handling the paper once again you check properly your details whether you have answered everything correctly okay so what to do with the question paper as i said first roll your eyes over all the questions once the worst mistake you can ma make on a competitive exam is not reading all the questions because it is not given in the order of difficulty right so somewhere in the corner maybe a very easy question is sitting right there it may be uh, in between questions from the topics which you have not prepared so don't uh, do ensure even if it is not your uh, subject which you have prepared at least just skim through the keywords to understand okay this is not what i am going to answer okay so you have to be very careful regarding that you can just mark a small tick in the questions which you may answer and don't count in the beginning just skim through the questions once you get the question paper while answering a particular question read read it link the options to the question as well as to your previous knowledge frame a mental diagram or you can even draw it on the paper this simply starts your brain to function so that you get in the solving mode okay and as I said, you have to identify the keywords in a question required to solve it and underline them, right? So as I said, you have to set some milestone. Break the entire test into smaller portions. Say your test is 3 hours long. So you can have some milestone for 30 minutes every. So see where you have landed, how many you were supposed to solve and where you are. But remember, always set realistic milestones, okay? And so have hard deadlines. So competitive exams rely on accuracy and speed both and that will imply high score overall accuracy okay but remember it is not on any particular question so if a question is taking too long to answer you can skip it for that time right so how long is too long again it depends on the question so example if you're not able to solve a question in three minutes you have to skip it no matter what so that may be for a section C or for a section B accordingly it will depend on the type of the question but you have to skip it if it is taking more than your given time all right so as I said do not get stuck treat every question on merit do not go with a preconceived notion about any module decide based on the question okay and don't take it as a prestige issue that is I know this topic I have to answer this question it's not like that it's not the right approach okay so if you feel you have devoted some time and you still couldn't answer you can just move on and then the last final few tips are do not spend more time on a question if you are not able to solve it within five minutes for part c or three minutes for part b maximum you should move on 
okay targeting the qualifying marks is very important and that is what i told in the beginning you should know your exam pattern and how much you should score in order to clear the exam so accordingly you can skip the unsure questions to avoid the negative marks okay selection of questions to solve from the question paper so what type of questions you can look forward so the ones which you can easily solve or very quickly you can solve it for example some graph based questions which you have to just analyze and tell the answer or maybe some true or false statements which are very easy okay or then there are match the following questions which are again one or two if you know the rest of all will come to you automatically okay so try to avoid related combination unit questions unless you are sure of the answer so which you which questions you start with the ones you feel easy okay and which you which will give you confidence and which will also save you time for the rest of the questions to solve all right so that's all students it was nice talking to you but before i end the session remember success is equal to strategy plus execution so the main thing is how you execute execute it out on the d day right so all we have to decide is what we do with the, with the time that is given to us that's a famous quote from lord of the rings all of us would be knowing right all right students so thank you uh, on to the handing on to the mic to the other faculty members who are going to talk about different competitive exams and how to crack them thank you research is what everybody has seen and to think what nobody has thought and it is very well said that he who does not research has nothing to teach hello everyone this is dr sabanoon a faculty member at biotechnica infolabs private limited your only bio source it's been 12 happy years biotechnica team is helping you in making your career in the field of biosciences dear students You know, research is a formalized curiosity which keeps on poking and trying us to the purpose. And usually, the seed of this germinates when you look into something that affects you personally, or that will affect your life, or one of your interests in some or the other way. A very well known. The emotion attribution theory justifies the use of research. on emotional knowledge and emotional understanding to explain the origins of interest when people experiences emotions they generate explanation concerning the causes of the emotion as a result people develop stable knowledge about the kinds of events objects and situations that will evoke or dampen certain emotions interest can thus be understood in terms of people beliefs and expectations concerning which event will be interesting and rewarding so almost in the graduation or prior to that we decide opting going for research and because we possess this instinct that somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known as according to the guidelines after getting graduated we jump into masters and upon completion we put our legs in qualifying for phd examination doctor of philosophy sounds apparently great and satisfying now we know that there are n number of government based universities institutes deemed colleges which are providing excellent research inputs with high impact publication and international appreciation and we all want to be in that race there are different guidelines eligibility criteria selection procedures for enrollment in different institutes or colleges you must either have national eligibility test score card in your hand or you must qualify the university's departmental test which is obviously headed by the interview or personal discussion with the panel for admission in the phd course so today I'll be giving you some crisp information on how to get selected TFIR examination. Tata Institute of Fundamental Research 
providing research opportunities for exceptionally talented and strongly motivated candidates is a national center of the government of India under the umbrella of Department of Atomic Energy as well as a deemed university that is awarding the degrees for masters and doctoral programs. The institute was founded in 1945 with support from Sir Dorabji Tata under the vision of Dr. Homi Bhabha. At TFIR, the basic research in physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, computer science and science education is carried out. The main campus is located in Mumbai with centers in Pune, Bangalore and Hyderabad. The Tata Institute of Fundamental Research is India's premier institution for advanced research in fundamental sciences. The institute grants a graduate program leading to the award of PhD, integrated MSc PhD, as well as MSc degrees in certain subjects. With its distinguished faculty, world-class facilities and stimulating research environment, it is an ideal place for aspiring scientists to initiate their career. The faculty at TIFR is subdivided into three schools, the School of Mathematics, the School of Natural Sciences, and the School of Technology and Computer Science. TIFR has three national centers, the National Center for Biological Sciences at Bangalore, the National Center for Radio Astrophysics, Pune, and the Bhumi Baba Center for Science Education at Mumbai. The School of Mathematics has a Center for Applicable Mathematics at Bangalore, focusing on applicable mathematics. So here comes the eligibility criteria and we'll be talking about only subject biological science. Candidates will be shortlisted for interview based upon their performance in the written test, their CV and scientific writer. For PhD, you must have Masters in Basic Science, that could be Biology, MSc in Biology or any other professional master degree such as M Pharma or a 4 year degree program. For Integrated PhD, you must have Bachelors in Basic Sciences or any 4 year degree program that awards a bachelor degree could be B.Tech, B.E or B Pharma. Moving on to the syllabus that has to be covered for preparation. The test will be extremely basic and covering the topics in mathematics, physics, chemistry and biology depending upon the subject. No special knowledge or preparation is required. You just need to revise your basic and that's it, that's all. The questions are related to basic sciences. The interview will be based on whatever area you are most interested in and comfortable in. There is no guidebook and no syllabus as such for the entrance test. For PhD and integrated PhD programs, the academic year starts from August 1st of every year. PhD students receives a monthly fellowship of rupees 25,000 which gets enhanced to 28,000 after registration. Integrated PhD students receives a monthly fellowship of rupees 16,000 for the first year and at the end of the first year upon satisfactory performance, the fellowship is enhanced to 25,000 per month for the raise to 28,000 after registration for PhD. However, the one who is in Masters in Biological Sciences receive a monthly fellowship of rupees 16,000 only, whereas those Having masters in wildlife biology and conservation, pursuing masters, they receive a monthly fellowship of rupees twelve thousand. Accommodation is provided to PhD and integrated PhD program students only, and that too at a nominal cost. So this was all about the basic knowledge regarding TIFR. Now I would like to give you some tips that can ease down your preparation and will help ensure your selection in the test. So here are some effective steps which if you cooperate will definitely bring you rewards. First thing, you need to find out the entire syllabus for the exam you are applying for. You would find the complete details for every subject. The syllabus is going to be your lifesaver. 
It points out what exactly you are up for. It singles out every topic that you need to pay attention to. It also eliminates the possibility of wasting time by studying for the topics that the questions are not going to feature from. So, syllabus is your roadmap to success. The way you study for an exam can define how you will fare in it. It is quite common among the students to stretch the hours and study hard for the exam. There is nothing wrong in it. You see, the amount of time you need to devote to your studies to prepare for the exam is going to stay the same. What you need to make sure is that you make the most of it. And this can only be accomplished by studying smart. So here's how you can do it. The first step is to be extremely focused about your goals. Now your goals need to be very very realistic and achievable. You can set goals for every day. For example, it could be a certain chapter you wish to complete or the number of problems you wish to solve in a day or so on. You need to be organized and disciplined about your efforts. Distraction should be tuned down to an absolute zero when you sit for your studies. Chart out every day with the topics you wish to cover and finish them on time. Dedication is of utmost importance in such cases. A holistic approach is always better than the rote memorization. You will remember the concepts you understand and as a result, you will recall and apply them easily. On the other hand, rote memorization can lead to unexpected blunders also. Use various memory techniques. Find out the words that suits you the best and use those. Appear for mock test. Mock tests play a very vital role in evaluating your readiness for the exams. Mock tests create an exam-like situation with similar patterns of question and a time limit to answer those correctly. Mock tests give you an important insights into your preparation and also help you locate your weaknesses. Mock test is to an exam what a draft is a final piece of writing. You need one to make the final writing flawless. It walks you through a similar situation of that of exam and familiarizes you with the loops and corners of it. It gives you enough time to lay out a plan of approach for your final exam. Additionally, mock tests are wonderful ways to identify how much you have actually retained and also revise the concepts you have learned. Time management. Look, a common complaint that can be heard from students after appearing for their exam is that they are unable to complete their paper within the given time frame. One of the key reasons behind that is the equal amount of time is not given per question, which obviously going to delay the completion of paper. At such an occasion, time management is very crucial to help students reach their goals within the given set of time. Planning should be done at the initial stage, division stage, as well as while appearing for the exam. This helps in gaining more confidence towards completing the exam within the allocated time, while also allocating enough time for revision. Prioritizing the to-do list will ensure that all tasks are completed within the stipulated time. Revision once will not be sufficient, as it is important to link different concepts to be able to target the right kind of question without any doubts. By being prepared at an early stage will help you appear more confident near to the date of examination. Practice as much as you can. No amount of practice is enough. The more you are practicing, the better you will get at solving problems and time management. With enough practice, you will find yourself calculating the steps mentally. Another good thing about practice is that there are lesser chances of mistakes. It also helps you identify the sections you are doubtful about. The next thing is textbook reading method that works, OK4R. Dr. Walter Bock has devised the OK4R method, which can help you pack up more information through power reading. It is to help you to ace competitive entrance exam. And here is how you go about it. O stands for overview. In the first glance, just read the headings subheadings, introductory paragraph, and summary at the end of the chapter. It will definitely give you a general idea of about what is included in this chapter. K for key ideas. Now go back to the beginning of the chapter and try to skim through the key ideas. 
The first sentence of each paragraph, italics and bold type text, tables, pictures and diagrams, bulleted sections and advertisements often present key ideas of the chapter. R1 for reading, the topic of chapter from beginning to end. R2 for recalling, now put your book aside and write down major points of what you have read and make your notes in few words or sentences. The immediate recall will only take a minute or two but doubles up your attention time of the topic you are studying. R3 for reflect. Now that you have kept the material in the storage unit of your memory, now it has to be shifted to permanent memory. Think about it and try to find the significance of what you have read and its relationship with other topics which you have learnt. Last but not the least, R4 that is review or revision. Plan out on weekends. You can test yourself and what you have learned through the week. In schools, there can be tests and quizzes that help you go through your notes again. The same thing could be followed when you are preparing for your PhD entrance examination. Some extras to be followed. Get into the right mood with the help of Russian physiologist Arvian Pavlov's experiment. The classical conditioning experiment by Pavlov's made dogs alive as soon as they heard the doorbell ringing in anticipation of food, yeah. The logic is, if you study the same subject at the same time and the same place, your brain start making association and get strained accordingly. Over a period of time, you just need to follow the clock and you will automatically get into the mood to study the subject within 10 minutes. Whether you like the subject or hate it, this trick is going to do wonders with you. And make no mistake, this is a necessity as far as the competitive entrance examination you are aiming at are concerned. Shorter study sessions work better than longer one and strenuous sessions. Psychologists have found that students learn as much in one hour session spread over four days as they learn in one six hour marathon sessions. It means that students could cut their study time at least 30% by, by using a well-planned study schedule or timetable. Consider this. When you study for a limited time, it makes your brain work more efficiently. Now, most of the IITs report that they can cram much more a day before an exam on a regular day, which just confirms this particular research conclusion. Besides, it is believed that during study breaks, the mind absorbs information automatically without any conscious effort on your part. Hence, for intense memorizations, Sessions like when you are trying to learn dates and events, names of countries and the capitals, a foreign language or math formula, you should not study more than 20 to 30 minutes at a stretch. This we usually follow in our school times, right? Remember? Another thing is to smart work is better than hard work. The attention you pay to the subject and alertness of your mind matters more than the time you spend on it. For competitive interest examination, especially one does not count the number of hours he or she is spending in front of books. Rather, you need to measure the amount of focused study you are doing. The most common strategies to keep yourself alert are Minimize the distraction. Start with the most difficult or boring subject when you are fully alert. Keep the easier ones when you feel lazy to study. Remember to take small breaks, drink some coffee, study during the early hours of the day and yes, do not get stressed out during the competitive entrance examination. Have faith and confidence in yourself. If followed strictly, these tips are definitely going to help in the examination and you will be coming out with flying colors. I hope you will implement these along with your preparation. Wish you a very good luck and bright future ahead. Have a nice day. So this was Dr. Sabha. Thank you Dr. Sabha for handing me over the conversation. Hello students, this is Dr. Preeti Sani, one of the academic support specialists at Biotechnica. Now I am going to help you a little bit by giving certain suggestions and tips 
regarding ICMR exam so that you can target and track your upcoming ICMR exam. Before starting with that, let me first introduce you to the concept of ICMR. Many of you must have already gone through this particular exam. So what is ICMR? This is the Indian Council of Medical Research which is an organization which offers the awards to young scientists with JRS or Junior Research Fellowships so that you can carry out your PhD in a successful manner without any financial hurdle. Okay. So the fellowships are given in the field of biomedical sciences particularly aiming at life sciences and also certain fellowships are given for the students of social sciences at medical colleges, biomedical research institutes as well as universities in India. Now without further ado let's jump into the topic of your interest. The pattern of examination. First of all you should know how your exam is going to happen, isn't it? So the negative marking of about one fourth mark is here as well. That means you should try to avoid negative marking as far as possible. So there are three sections. Part A is aptitude section which consists of 50 questions and this part A is compulsory. That means you have to solve 50 questions all of those. But negative marking implies. Okay. Obviously if you are going to solve lesser questions, suppose you solve 40 questions, you are going to lose mark for rest of the 10 questions. Right. And the questions asked are from topics like scientific phenomena in everyday life, general knowledge in sciences, common statistics, each of which is going to carry one mark. So if you have studied properly in your school, in your college, obviously you are going to easily solve this particular section. Okay. And also it is based on general knowledge. So an added advantage to those who are regular in their efforts or who are trying to be more scientific in their approach. Then there is part B for life science students and part C for social science students. Now part B and part C are optional. If you are life science student, obviously you are going to choose for life sciences part B. So in that case you are going to perform part A and part B sections. If you are a social science student, in that case obviously you are going to opt for section A and section C. Obviously. So as I said, 50 questions are there for A section. 100 questions are there each in part B and part C. Now for section B or part B you should do 75 questions. So that means you are having an option of leaving any 25 questions. Same goes for social science students. They can leave 25 questions and rest 75 has to be performed by them. Okay. So the syllabus for Life sciences is as per postgraduate levels, but obviously with stress on certain particular subjects like human biology, human diseases, then plants. Okay, so same is for social sciences, but again the negative marking of 0.25 for each wrong answer persists here as well. So there is one more criterion here that you should not be solving more than 75 questions in these two. If you are solving more than 75 questions in your life sciences part B or social sciences part C that means they are going to consider only initial 75 questions even if they are wrong. Okay. So try to reduce the negative marking and medium of instruction is English only 
then duration is 2 hours so in 2 hours you are supposed to solve 70 plus 50 questions which is 125 questions compulsorily okay and all of those questions carry one mark each okay so the subjects included are botany biochemistry biotechnology biophysics genetics human biology human nutrition microbiology molecular biology immunology physiology and zoology so here a piece of advice rather than going for more of botany you can leave that because it is based on medical research it is icmr exam so that is going to ask you more and more from human diseases or human physiology human biology then plants so you can skip this particular portion that will be obviously covered under the 25 questions which you are going to leave behind uh, part a consists of topics like scientific phenomena which may include hurricane snow volcano rain earthquake wind tsunami tornado so these are those questions which you may easily attempt if you are having a thorough understanding of everyday phenomena and you can also follow certain reference books to solve these particular topics. Same is for general knowledge in science. If you are going through newspapers regularly, you can easily go through these questions and attempt these as well. Measurements, you know measurements volume cylinder these are 10 standard questions nuclear science obviously they are not going to ask you very details very much details of nuclear science radioactivity and and other related questions you can easily attempt synthetic materials then for statistics also you can go through your pg level of statistics that will be sufficient because at your postgraduate level you have studied hypothesis hypothesis tests confidence intervals probability so most of the questions uh, you will be able to solve okay so, so section a is not a stress in fact it is an added advantage so coming on to tips and tricks first thing you should know what the syllabus is like i told you go through those particular subjects now you know icmr is more of a medical exam so prepare accordingly you can leave botany you can leave plants okay and also the previous year question papers are not easily available so you can look for certain books which can supplement your knowledge about human physiology genetics biochemistry and the question papers obviously standard books are required here like Leninger you should never leave a standard book beside behind the more you learn the more you get try to solve the past year question papers if not from ICMR from certain related question papers and model papers you can get everywhere so practice more and more of those select the best reference books that can cover all the basic topics of the course so stick to the basics if you have attempted this exam previously you must be knowing that they ask very basic questions like which of these is the selection medium for e coli so you should know which of the four options is a good selective medium for e coli choose the topic that are very important to study first prepare notes this is very important aspect you should always prepare notes because whatever is being written in the book or in some presentation all those things may not be important to you you should make notes of those things which is important from that particular question paper point of view for example notes from CSIR may not be applicable to ICMR. So prepare your own notes and keep revising the subject or the topic 
which you find difficult. Make proper note of that particular topic which you find difficult and keep revising that on daily basis. Now for ICMR you are not going to get a lot of numericals. Only few numericals from statistics or maybe maths. That too in section A. So try to avoid numerical part. Motivation and planning are mandatory. Don't get disheartened that I am not able to learn, understand this, I am not able to learn that. Keep trying, you will get success. Put small daily targets, weekly targets, study 5 to 6 hours a day. So, regularity, punctuality and hard work are the keys. Practice time management because you know within 2 hours you have to solve 75 questions which are memory based and 50 questions which are hit and trial based. Try to manage the time and get yourself some buffer time as well. Prepare for negative marking. For part B at least, try to reduce the negative marking to the minimum. Mark the questions that you feel are important or tough. Like you can go through certain previous year question papers. Those questions which are repeatedly occurring, being asked, those you can prepare well. Then uh, have to improve faith in yourself. Try not to lose your heart. Then certain particular ICMR question paper based tips and tricks. Because I told you it is medical based question paper. So keep a hold on yesteryears, diseases, epidemics which have occurred. The Charts can be prepared for diseases, causative agents, treatments, symptoms, all these things you should learn by heart. The more you can learn, the more you can score. Make tables for pathogens and their diagnostic measures, for example, ELISA. Tables for pathogens and their growth media like E. coli, lactose tolerance test and so many things you can remember. And as I said, stick to the basics. So the problem with students is that they keep on learning more and more. They keep on grasping more and more. But most of their knowledge is superficial. So first clear your basics. Since there is no distribution pattern given by ICMR, try to remember as much as you can. Around 10 questions from stats are expected. So learn basics of stats as well. Chi-square. Hypothesis, T-test, ANOVA, basic probability, whatever you can remember, do, just go for that. Also, you can make uh, charts for enzymes, their functions, certain important syndromes like Patau syndrome. Okay, so these tables and charts will help you learn more and more. Points and charts that will give you picture memory and how to prepare in less time. Same thing, prepare tables, charts so that at the end moment you can simply go through these tables, charts and refresh your memory. Chalk out flow charts for the procedure, keep images, figures, diagrams handy. So these kind of notes you can easily make because you have to remember more and more. Is it possible for you to remember the whole sentences or the whole paragraphs? No. Go for important points. Skim through previous year question papers and solutions. Even not from ICMR. If you are not getting it from ICMR, you can go for similar question papers like from CSIR, GATE, DBT. Right. Remember examples and mechanisms for match the following type of questions. Now, since it is not having any section C or part C like CSIR. It's part B. CSIR part B is similar to section B of your ICMR. Isn't it? Then. Now if you are having a 3 month study plan. You are not getting enough time. So what you can do? 
study at least 3 hours a day general aptitude 1 hour daily subject questions 2 hour daily okay still if the time is running very fast you were not able to chalk out a 3 month study plan what you can do is at least study for 1 month then please study for at least 1 month and be hard on yourself here i have given 2 hours daily for general aptitude and 4 hours daily for subject questions however depending on the requirement and feasibility you can extend this whole chart to 8 hours as well 3 hours 5 hours the more you learn the more you get now for part a there is one more tip i told you negative marking you can leave for part b but for section a you can take a risk suppose if you are able to solve 35 to 40 questions that is maximum questions you are able to solve then please don't leave the rest 15 or 10 questions because in the worst scenario if you are not able to solve all of them correctly that means if out of 15 or 10 you are not able to solve all of them correctly again you are having certain probability to score how if you have attempted 10 questions that means initially 40 questions you were confident with in section a that these are correct and you are left with only 10 questions which are again compulsory so what you can do is you should attempt that as well if three of them are correct and seven of them are wrong again these will give rise to negative score of 0.25 each and these will give rise to one mark each so still you will be getting 1.25 mark out of 10 questions that will add to rest of 40 question mark right so that is actually adding up to your marks but please don't try the same strategy if you don't know at least 35 questions out of 50 questions in section a because that will lead to more of negative marking and less of marks <laughs> and these are a list of books which you can refer okay so these are standard books which you, you should definitely go through especially in relation to medical microbiology please don't leave behind anant narayan and panikar this was all about icmr tips and tricks now let me hand over this to dr kajol Thank you Preeti for your valuable insights on ICMR exam. Hello and welcome to Biotechnica. My name is Kajol and I'll be talking about DBT exam. So let's start with what a DBT exam is all about. DBT JRF program was initiated in 2004 and it was initiated to provide fellowships for biotech students pursuing research in universities and research institutions in the country. students are basically selected through online biotech eligibility test which is also called as bet 275 fellowship are awarded every year for this particular exam now department of biotechnology ministry of science and technology government of india they provide the fellowship to meritorious candidates for pursuing research in biotechnology through gbt jrf program the program is advertised only once in a year tentatively around january only bona fide indian citizens residing in india are eligible to apply the candidates are selected through biotechnology eligibility test that is called as bet an online test conducted in multiple cities and centers now based on the performance in this particular online test there are two criteria of merit list which have been prepared category 1 and category 2 candidates selected under category 1 that is the top 
275 candidates are eligible to avail fellowship under this program. These are tenable in any university institute in India where the candidates can register for PhD program. Candidates selected under category 2 that is the next 100 in a merit list are eligible to be appointed in any DBT sponsored project and they can avail the fellowship from the project equivalent to net gate subject to the selection through institutional selection process. The program is implemented by Biotech Consortium India Limited that is called as BCIL New Delhi a company promoted by DVT. Candidates may apply through online application portal and they can appear in bed. The detailed application process is given at DBT JRF program selection process which is posted on this site. So you can go on this site and check the criteria of selection also will get an online link for application. Now activation of fellowship. The fellowship can be activated after joining PhD program in any Indian university or an institute. Candidate is given two years time for securing admission in PhD from the date of issue of award letter beyond which the fellowship will lapse. Candidate who are already enrolled for PhD program can also activate the fellowship from the date of issue of award letter. The candidate has to submit the following things. Data sheet undertaking an NEFT that is the electronic fund transfer form as per annexer 2, 3, 4 respectively in order to activate the fellowship. If you want these forms you can refer to this particular link. These forms are readily available on this link. Now for the question paper structure. This one is a revised question paper structure as per 2016. So there are two sections. One is section 1. The next is section B. Section A basically consists of general science, mathematics, chemistry, general aptitude, analytical, quantitative ability, general biotechnology. The number of questions which are provided in section A are 50 and it is compulsory to attempt all the 50 questions. Each question carry 3 marks, hence the total marks for section A is 150. Section B is extremely particular about biotechnology. So all the questions will be very specific to this particular field of biotech. There are 150 total questions out of which you can attempt any 50. Each question again carries 3 marks, so 3 into 50 is 150. Okay. So the total marks for the whole BET exam is 300. There is a negative marking also. Minus 1 for each wrong answer. So you have to be extremely careful and only solve the questions which you are confident about. As I said, part A consists of these all subjects and part B is specific to biotechnology. Part A will have all the 50 questions which are compulsory. And part B 150 out of which only 50 questions are needed to be attempted. So you can choose good amount of 50 questions which you are confident about from this 150 questions. Be careful about this because as there is a negative marking. Now let's go to part A. What kind of questions have been asked in part A? Aptitude and general biotechnology. So aptitude they consist of questions which are like comprehension based where a written paragraph is given for the student to read and then question based on that paragraph is being asked. They may be designed to test non-verbal reasoning capacity as well. So for example by finding the odd one out in the series of abstract pictures. They may also provide of quantitative type of questions designed to test the student's ability to comprehend large numbers and do simple calculations. Some of the tips and tricks to solve this particular part A are you can actually go on some good sites like India Bits, the link is being provided here 
and must guru the link is provided here you will get lot of general aptitude type of question on these both sites the most interesting and helpful part of these sites are they also provide the solution for each of the aptitude question and there is a different section for different type of aptitude question for example profit and loss will consist of separate questions then there is next icon which will only consist of questions on distance so such type of questions are extremely helpful for learning the pattern also to be um, confident enough to solve questions from aptitude this will also help for your rest of the national level exams also you can practice the aptitude type of questions from the gre books so you can go to the nearby store and get gre aptitude books and solve questions from that because most of the national level exams follow almost similar pattern to that of gre in terms of asking aptitude type of questions give at least 1 hour every day for practicing these types of questions also the most important thing is practice from the previous year dbt bet question paper this is very helpful the next part is of general biotechnology the subjects which are included in general biotechnology are biomolecular structure and function method in biotechnology organization of structure and function of prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells cellular processes recombinant dna technology genetic phylogeny and evolution genomics and proteomics ipr biosafety and bioethics i'll give you certain tips and tricks also certain good amount of reference books from which you can study these topics always remember for any national level examination prepare from the standard reference books for the sections like biomolecular structure and function organization of structure and function of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell cellular processes genomics and proteomics you can follow these all references developmental biology by scott gilbert cell biology bruce albert lordish then molecular biology by david then crep lenin jay is a very good book for biochemistry specifically if you want to study from the basics voit and voit is another extremely good book for this particular topic and then stylo the next section that is the methods in biotechnology and recombinant dna technology can be studied from principle of gene manipulation and genomics by primrose and tomon from genes to clones by vinacker microbiology by prescott then stahl these are all some very excellent books which will prepare you at most for this particular exam for the next section like ipr biosafety and bioethics you can actually refer to goel and parashar time management the next section i will be talking about how you can manage time and divide time for your complete schedule give at least 2 hours every day for studying general biotechnology take one section at a time by following the syllabus and then study from the reference book for that particular section also you can remove notes so that it is easy for you to prepare at the last moment complete your sleep it is very important and eat healthy for your alert mind now part b this part is extremely specialized for biotechnology the following are the types of biotechnological field which are which you can choose for your bet exam like you can choose for agriculture biotech animal biotech mtech biotechnology biochemical engineering industrial biotech bioinformatics and computational biology environmental biotechnology marine biotechnology medical biotechnology molecular and human genetics neuroscience and pharmaceutical biotechnology to understand more detail about what all syllabus are included in these sub sections you can follow this particular reference read textbooks thoroughly for each section one can get the basic concept only through the textbooks and it is very important to clear all your basics so as to answer the logical type of and analytical type of questions
The next is flash cards can be used to remember the facts. Make a table in chart paper to remember important formulas or important metabolic cycles. For the last movement preparation go through instinct notes. Aim to study at least 14 hours 2 months prior to that exam till 5 days before the exam date. Try to cover syllabus by going through instant notes. Do keep up with your study plan. You can actually follow the following hours like biochemistry can give 4 hours, biotech 4 hours, cell biology 2, genetics 2, immunology 2 hours and microbiology numericals might, can be given only 1 hour. So this 14 hour is only if you are going to practice or prepare for this exam 2 months prior. If you are going to prepare 6 months prior, prior it is going to be more easier for you. You can give less hours that is 7 hours per day and prepare and also always read from the reference book. Thank you so much. I will pass the presentation to the next faculty to talk more about other national level exams. Thank you. Thank you ma'am for that lovely insight. Hello students, I am Rashmi and today I will be discussing about different tips on how to target and crack one of life sciences most important exam, the CSIR UGC NET exam. So I hope students you are able to hear me and see my screen as well. In case otherwise, kindly point out, raise your hand or drop in a chat so that we can fix it. Okay, so I'm hoping everyone is able to see and hear me clearly. Now, why did I point out that this exam is one of the most important exams? Because once you clear this exam, you are number one eligible for or entitled to a PhD program, right? Along with that, you also receive your very own fellowship or a stipend. Now, many institutes um, generally they hand out a fellowship or a stipend amount during the tenure of your uh, engagement with them. So CSIR allows you to have a fellowship of your own. The second most important benefit is that clearing this exam allows you to even become applicable for lecturership in various colleges and universities. Right? So keeping that in mind, let us look at various tips that can help you clear the exam. Now, in your life sciences syllabus, if you've gone through, there is a vast number of chapters. That is, there are 13 different life science units altogether, along with which you have general aptitude. Now, general aptitude comprises of a very important part of your CSIR paper. A lot of you may not be comfortable with general mathematics but the whole point of keeping this in your paper is to assess whether a student is um, in future going to have a good analytical skills in order to analyze his own work or not. Right? So for this the best pro method that you can follow is try solving questions which are more graphical, which are more logical interpretation. For example, probabilities, Venn diagrams, uh, you can have uh, questions based on bar graphs, charts, um, uh, sensex, etc. Um, so, and then again, you can have formula based questions, for example, mensuration related question, where you have um, area, volume, all of these asked. So, part A or general aptitude can only be cleared with a lot of practice. You can pick up any class 11, 12 or uh, better yet class 9, 10 books or maybe any competitive exam books or you even have wonderful reference books for CSIR itself where you can practice ample amount of quantitative aptitude. That will help you definitely score and improve your rank for the exam. Now. The second part that we come to is the subjective part wherein you have these 13 units to be covered. Now according to me reading and memorizing all 13 units is almost next to impossible. So we have to plan a smart study. Now how do we do that is out of the 13 units you can be selective. 
For example, one may find a choice between unit 1 and 30. It's not um, wrong to do so because uh, unit 13 is more mathematical based whereas uni um, or technique based unit 1 has mathematics of its own again it has a lot of concepts of biochemistry metabolism etc so depending upon which is your strong point you may either choose to go with techniques go with restriction enzyme digestion etc sort of problems or you may also go for biochemistry related problems now you can choose either one of 1 and 13 if you want a weightage analysis i definitely prefer 13 to have more weightage but then the syllabus coverage in 13 is slightly higher. So let's keep it this way. Choose one unit among 1 and 13. Now, sections 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are extremely important scoring. And you must not skip any of those units. Right? Now, in case you are comfortable with 6, you may opt to leave out 7 or else uh, people who are from zoology background who prefer uh, physiology over plant physiology may prefer animal physiology or unit 7 over unit 6. So 2, 3, 5 remains common for every one of you whereas you can pick unit 6 or 7 based upon your specialization. Unit 8 once again is very very important, very scoring as well. It has a lot of analytical problems so I would suggest do not skip it. Now unit 9 is classical. So if you are from a classical background you must find this very easy to follow. In case otherwise it is up to you, you may choose to ignore this. right? Then again, we have sections 10 and 11. You may have an option between these two. Either choose 10 or choose 11, but then a wise man would study both. Since it has been seen that the weightage in um, roughly every odd semester increases for ecology evolution. Right? Coming to unit 12, you may do a selective study. For example, agrobacterium related problems. For example, Krelopsby for uh, gene manipulation techniques. These may be emphasized a little more and the other portions may be skipped. Right? So this is a complete analysis of all the 13 units. Now, if I analyze the 2018 December exam, uh, you may have also seen it upon the Biotechnica website. So this is a small analysis of how the question paper pattern distribution has been. Now, you must always be aware of which units have a higher score weightage and which units may be ignored. Now, if you see, there is a fine balance between all the units. In certain cases, you may find the part C's getting more dominance. In certain cases, you may find the part B's having more dominance. So, it's better to do your unit selection based upon either the question distribution or based on the number of, um, um, I mean, the amount of syllabus or the length of syllabus versus its score distribution. So I will help you in analyzing the same. Now, another trick that you must master is whenever you sit down to select your topics, do an analysis on which are the topics from which your past year questions have been most appearing. For example, in case in a June exam, you find that a certain topic has seen a lot of weightage. There is a very high possibility that in the next December exam, that particular topic may not be asked with that much dominance. So it is very important for you to solve the previous year questions, to analyze and come up with different patterns in order for you to do a smart study. Now, how can we do that? For example, if you see, I have all the different 13 units segregated based on the number of questions that have been asked from each topic. For example, in unit 2, part B, which deals with all your cell organelles, protein localization, etc., you find that a lot of questions have been asked. Hence, this part has a lot of weightage. Now, similarly, if we look at certain topics like, um, for example, <coughs> unit 3 part D, 
Now this portion has hardly seen any questions or unit 1 part D and part C. There were hardly any questions that had come for this paper. Now if the trend is so, there is a high probability that the very next session you may have a question from these units. And there is a high probability you may not have a question from this particular unit. So in order to um, have a selective study, it is very essential for you to understand the pattern that has been followed so far. So this is one of the examples that we have given you on our website. Uh, you may also uh, prepare one of your own. You may also analyze in the same pattern and that will definitely help you understand which portions are much more relevant for you to study. Now, let us go topic wise. So, let me pick up the first unit which is unit biochemistry. Now, biochemistry, if you look through the syllabus, um, it's something that we have covered in our essential 11 and 12 as well. For example, atoms, molecules, bonding, um, bio, biomolecule classification, etc. Uh, pH buffer, reaction kinetics, these are all part of our school days. Along with this, there are many portions that probably you would have done in your college life. For example, having Ramachandran plot, amino acid metabolisms, etc. So, a cumulative of this study has to be done for unit 1. The best reference books that you can follow is Leninger and maybe Voight and Voight, whichever you are comfortable with. So unit 1 biochemistry I would definitely suggest that you go through since the question patterns have not been very difficult it is easy to analyze and it is very much scoring. Now there are certain topics out of this unit that have prime importance for example if you look at numericals I would definitely suggest pH buffer, um, enzyme catalysis um, as um, and amino acid charge etc classification as the most primary ones. You also have things like Ramachandran plots, you have uh, bonding etc from where a lot of analytical questions have come. So you can pick these questions up, do a detailed or a thorough study of these portions. Then again you have overlaps in metabolism with other units. So this is how you may plan this unit. Moving on to unit 2, cellular organization, the best books are definitely Gerald Karp. You have a small portion of microbiology which can definitely be followed from books like Prescott, Pelzar, etc. Now Karp is a very simplified book. Many of you may also like to follow Alberts. It depends upon your feasibility. Now things like um, mito, uh, sorry, membrane transport. Things like organelle transport are very very important from this. Questions from cell cycle have often been seen. So it is good to not ignore these topics. Moving on to unit 3, books like Watson or maybe iGenetics or simple books like uh, Levin, um, Russell um, or maybe Twyman. All of these may be used for this unit. Now. This is about DNA replication, repair, translation, etc. So uh, out of these portions, a lot of questions have come around DNA repair, replication, etc. Around transcription, translation. Whereas in the last, um, last paper, uh, very few questions have come from this unit. Now, if you move on to unit 4, you may use books like Alberts and Carp again for studying about D-cell. You have a huge portion upon immunology which has gained a lot of importance over the past years. So this can be studied from the book QB. It's a wonderful book for immunology. Now there are a lot of questions that have come from cancer mixed with cell cycle. You have cell signaling mixed with cancer. So while you do a study, make sure your concepts are crisp and clear around these portions. A lot of questions have been asked from this unit and it is a very scoring unit. Let's move on to unit 5 which is developmental biology. A very very scoring unit must not be left out. Plant dev bio can be done from Tazenzeiger whereas animal dev bio has to be followed from Gilbert. Out of these basic concepts of development, morphogenical patterns, 
um, uh, fertilization are very very important then again you have questions from apoptosis that have been asked so these portions must not be skipped there are experiments to be learnt you should understand the basic of the experiments go through different definitions understand clear and picturize the concepts that will definitely help you score from here there are very direct questions asked and it's a very very scoring unit moving on to unit six again plant pathology you definitely have uh, plant biology from Tezenzeiger. So use this book as uh, blindfoldedly you can use this book for study. Um, and so plant physiology has to be done from Tezenzeiger. If you look at animal physiology, there are a lot of topics uh, or a lot of questions that are right now being asked in the recent few years. So unit 7 initially had uh, less dominance in the exam but nowadays the dominance is improving. Questions from cardiovascular system, the excretory system, the endocrine reproduction and the nervous system have been very very frequently asked. Books like Tortora, Guyton and Gano, uh, these are definitely the most important books that you will be required to follow. Now, Unit 7 and Unit 6, again students, you can have a choice. It depends on whether um, you are comfortable with whichever physiology background, you may follow that. But I would suggest that Unit 7 is right now building a lot of, um, um, I mean, a lot of potential. So, Please do not skip this unit. Looking at unit 8, this is a very very scoring unit with a lot of pedigree analysis, with a lot of um, uh, genetics going on, that is gene analysis. For example, you have linkage related questions, you have Mendelian, uh, Mendelian inheritance related questions, you have a lot of mutation related questions which again fall back under unit 3. So all these questions, a lot of problems have been done and solved in SNUSTAT. You may definitely refer them. And then again, you can refer basic books like Russell, Watson, etc. to clear your concepts, your basic concepts in genetic. Again, genetics is very concept based. If you get your concepts clear, no matter how difficult the question is, you will definitely score. So do not leave this particular topic. Unit 9 is more classification based. So you can follow books like Taxonomy on Plants by Guru Charan. You can have Animal Taxonomy by Ashok Verma. So um, yeah, Plant Taxonomy, Recent History about uh, Ecology, um, Conservation, bio, uh, Biosphere Distribution, etc. These are frequent questions asked. And nowadays you have a lot of cladistics and pheno, um, phenograms that have been asked. So clear your concepts around these areas as well. If you look at unit 10, there is a lot of ecological related questions that generally have a higher dominance in the June exam. So I would definitely suggest you not to skip this uh, unit. Now, out of ecology, you must also be aware of the recent developments that are going on in ecology. For example, uh, um, if we talk about ecological succession, if we talk about wildlife, you must be updated with very recent news as well. The easiest books to follow are maybe P.D. Sharma. Campbell is one of the good books. You also have books from Odom. So, these are the best reference books that you can follow for ecology. If you look at unit 11 which is evolution, evolution has a lot of concepts to be memorized. For example, paleontology, the evolution clock etc, molecular evolution. You have a lot of sums coming from population genetics. So I would definitely say Hardy Weinberg law do not skip doing this portion. It is very simple about genetic drift, understanding about migration, mutation, etc. These are simple and very, very scoring. One of the books that you can refer is once again Campbell. So that will help you analyze certain parts that are common to both ecology and evolution. Now, coming to unit 12, which is more applied. Out of these, it is um, you have a portion of vaccines which can be covered from immunology. 
you have certain genomics and transgenics which can be done by books from primrose you have breeding selections biomarker you have uh, things like agrobacterium you have genomic techniques like prelox p which are very very frequently asked so definitely even if you do not do a complete study of unit 12 you can always have selective study for example marker assisted selection maybe bits and parts of these genomic engineering transgenic building uh, vaccines which have gained a lot of importance over the last few sessions right and the last unit that we come to is methods in biotechnology or methods in biology a good book to be followed is Wilson and Walker. Apart from this, you must be very, very clear with basic techniques, microscopic techniques, with um, immunological techniques, with RDT related problems. A lot of emphasis comes from part A, which is recombinant DNA technology, how to provide RAPD analysis, RFLP analysis, marker assisted selection, where you have restriction enzyme related problems. Then again, a lot of statistical related questions wherein mean median modes have also been asked. A lot of emphasis has now been given on the microscopic techniques, definitely on the immunological techniques and then again on techniques like um, immunological techniques and definitely techniques like uh, spectroscopy. Right? So these are things that you must not miss out. They will definitely help you score. So thank you very much students. I hope this session has been um, um, an eye opener or this has been informative for you. If you have any questions, I'll be free to answer. Kindly, <clears throat> kindly place your questions. Okay, so I'm hoping you all have understood and uh, all the very best for your exam the trick to clear the csir net exam is not doing a detailed study but to do a smart study so pick up your pen analyze tips and tricks prepare charts make flow charts make tables make handy notes so that just before the exam things like evolutionary clock etc you have it on your fingertips because these are very scoring topics there are certain topics of high importance Try and figure them out, try and extract them and prune your knowledge upon them. So thank you students, thank you very much. Handing over the mic. Hi guys. I can see that how much excitement and then the belief, faith, belief that you guys have got after going through this webinar. So here it is, your most awaited. The tips to target and crack the gate exam. So there is a problem. Success can be attained with a smart strategy and planning along with good preparation. Who told this? This is everybody has told out of their experience. It is the truth. So before going to the tips, hope you guys know that. So just to brush up the gate exam, how big it is. Each and every year, more than 10 lakh students are trying to take this gate exam. So even we can say this, this is one of the largest exam after for PG courses in the country. So among there are so many disciplines, the gate examination is happening out of which five disciplines are more famous. So mechanical, electronics, computer, electrical, civil. <clears throat> Don't get uh, uh, disappointed that our biotechnology is not there. But this year, the number of applicants for each and every discipline has increased. In one way it is good, in the other way the competition is high. So this can be uh, realized based on the number of 
sessions that has been allotted across all the centers you can just visit the website gate website you can understand it so this year we know that hardly 15 days more so it was conducted by iit madras 2019 uh, gate exam that is going to start from february 2nd so totally there are uh, 24 papers with the inclusion of statistics this year and then you guys know that you must have downloaded the admit card which has been released in january 4th itself if it is not please download right now so the results will be out on march 16th so in this examination two important type of questions will be there one will be multiple choice where a question will be with the four options will be given it is very easy to answer the next one is the numerical answer type it is called a snat so no choices will be provided you have to use the calculator virtual calculator that is provided in the computer and then you have to calculate you have to you have to enter the answer on your own so it can be integers like one two three four five or it can be in decimals or it like 10.1 10.2 10.3 like that or it can be only decimal like 0 0.12 0 0.56 so on so you need to brush up the skills to calculate uh, using virtual calculators so right now you are seeing the biotechnology part so this is mostly common among across all the paper codes or the other disciplines 15 percentage of the exam pattern will have your uh, general aptitude 15 percentage engineering mathematics 70 percentage is your subject and then um, what is the cutoff mark how much i want to score so this all will give you an idea that how much you want to score is if it is a general in 2017 it was 38.9 and then 2018 27.9 so we don't know whether it's going to increase or decrease so the other pattern some of you might be taking gate life sciences so this paper the chemistry is compulsory which consists of 15 questions of for 25 marks in this there will be some of the questions and your problems also will be asked and then you have to answer uh, general aptitude for total 15 marks apart from the chemistry the you guys have to select one section there will be a lot of sections so section will consign contains uh, 20 questions for 30 marks if you see the weightage the chemistry it is a compulsory there will be five one mark question 10 two mark questions and then you are uh, subject questions there will be one mark 10 one mark question 10 20 two mark questions okay so till now we have seen that all the in, all the basic information you guys already might be knowing or just to refresh yes this is the pattern of my exam so right now i have all those things so hardly we have two weeks so what we should do so from now every day at least you have to spend two hours on working on engineering mathematics two hours on general aptitude and then four hours on subject question so nothing you are going to study new it is all is going to be revision so revise 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 in two hours do variety of questions variety of topics don't stick on to one topic for the complete four hours this will help you a lot so these are some of the last minute tips so now you guys know that what the exam pattern will be because knowing the exam pattern you will know what kind of questions will be asked 
so as i said that no calculators nothing will be allowed so you guys have to use online so there is an option for virtual calculator yes you guys can do it so adapt yourself uh, to use virtual calculator so even though you guys are having uh, experience but under the time restriction you guys might have difficulty sub 15 20 minutes every day just practice it is always good now so and then do lot of uh, question papers so what kind of question the previous year question paper nothing wrong in that so all the question papers are available online so download it do it so when you are doing it definitely you guys will do wrong no harm in that so nothing new also don't get panic so if you guys make any wrong in the question take few minutes sit and analyze what was my keyword why i opted this option why not the right option so which what makes you to choose the wrong one analyze if that concept is not clear take the book immediately revise it clear yourself by chance if any question related to that comes you are on the happy side whatever you do don't do too much don't stress yourself it is not good there are for say like 10 topics are there if you are good in eight topics focus on that build on your strength don't worry about the leftover two topic it is not good for the last minute so always keep yourself positive and motive don't compare yourself with your friend that she is doing or he is doing for 10 hours full night all those things for your information i'll tell you recently there was a research says that a person can concentrate only some amount so what is that some amount one five years old kid can have the concentration for only for five minutes so if you are 25 years old kid you can concentrate only for 25 minutes after that i'm not saying that you cannot take a break take a break for 10 minutes and then continue for the next 25 minutes take a break 25 minutes don't stress yourself nothing you are going to get out of it except depression and then stress so take a break no harm in that so you guys have to stay very positive about that don't compare yourself to others you have your own way of preparation eat healthy stuff and then ensure that you keep healthy no extra marks will be awarded if you are not slept for three days not taken food for four days no marks will be awarded be healthy so these are the things i told that what you want to do the things which you you should avoid don't overthink overdo things don't get demotivated while solving previous year question don't blindly go on answer just don't take the question and then the uh, keys are uh, a right b right see that why it is a right why not b i thought that just self-analyze don't tell to anyone correct yourself that is the that is the time and then that too if you do it in the last 15 days it will be fresh in your mind okay now you are you are having complete hold of your topics subjects so it's very easy to analyze you can do it so this is the these are the things that you have to do for the last 15 days or so the right now we right now we have <clears throat> so tomorrow is february 2 so day before february 1st what do you want to do don't forget important things thing number one definitely you guys must have downloaded the admit card take a color printout keep it right now don't wait for the good day 
very close to the examination do it today tomorrow morning if you are not done tomorrow morning first thing you have to do is take a color print out keep it safe and then also save the same copy in the google drive don't put somewhere in the desktop or something like that. save it in the google drive so that it will be there for permanent why i ask you to save it now this admit card and then as well as your mark card are very important not only for your uh, postgraduate admission or your phd admission whatever it may be it is also required for uh, even there are government jobs available if you clear gate so that time it is very important moreover it is valid for the next three years if you are not able to after clearing if you are not able to get any good uh, seat what which you like you can try next year no harm in that so you have to save it right now and then um, definitely you guys might have chosen the center day before itself just have a look where the center is on the day don't rush don't ask the auto person ola uber do it today itself so no confusion on the day before the exam so before the day you have to know where the center is and then you you can prepare examination kit so the examination kit should contain your photo id which you opted when you while you are um, filling up the exam uh, application and then your admit card and then uh, this are only two things it will they will allow so just have it and make a file and then keep it ready so no electronic gadgets or no electronic no calculators dress well um, comfortable dress just go so pre examination just on the day of examination so you can you must have read that the rule says that before 20 minutes you will be allowed to enter the hall and then you can start the exam during the 20 minutes what you can do now you can um, read all the instructions make yourself clear what to do what not to do in the online examination use this time 20 minutes to understand the instruction and then you will be given the scribble pad also for your rough work so however you have to return the scribble pad when you come out but also you have to write your name and then um, examination number all those things uh, registration number on the scribble pad before you leave it's very important the next point is quickly read the question paper very very important tips quickly read the question paper or read the question quickly read it and then try to grasp the essence of the question so that you can easily answer the question Okay. Once you read, next start the exam by clicking on the section which you like to attempt because you have a different subject options. So mostly uh, all the toppers in the interview they have told that they always start with the subject um, session because you guys are the boss in the subject section. So by answering more correct questions, you are uh, more you will be motivated. You will get a lot of. Um, belief on you so if you find difficulty in answering your uh, aptitude or engineering maths you can do it next one and the next tip is mostly people will try to answer one more question because it will be very easy when compared to the two more question do it so if you find uh, easy in that answering uh, one more question first do it as long as you keep yourself motivated no harm in that and the next thing is always answer the questions that you know first so again it is only to build your confidence level very important thing moving to the next question before that you have to save the answer very very important so if you are not able to save the answer will be lost you will be keep on redoing it you will waste a lot of time <coughs> so
so when you come across the questions if you re, if you see if you if you have if you feel that this question i know but i need some workout uh, note that question the scribble back so you don't want to keep on reading going through all the questions when you come back so when you write the question number in the scribble pad directly you can go and then work out and then you can answer in no time and then one one important thing is answer all the question you know don't waste that time on the questions which you don't know another important thing is um, the more the wrong questions you answer there is a negative marking so there is negative marking for your subject there is a negative marking for uh, aptitude but there is no negative marking for numerical type of questions so that um, try to attempt that after attending all the questions don't leave any questions which you know okay and then if you are not good in problems don't waste much time on that because time is very very important time management very very important so negative marking is there don't avoid don't answer the questions which you don't know because you will be losing the marks which you have scored so don't do that so to summarize the last 15 days solve maximum number of previous year question paper after solving revise and analyze practice calculation last minute no new topics keep yourself healthy so sleep and meditate another important thing is believe in yourself and the hard work you put in don't compare with your besties they have their own plan and strategy you are having your own plan and strategy don't get confused by seeing others it will be collapse your entire preparation keep believe in yourself very very important whether you are prepared or not believe that you will clear this exam because you have prepared you have prepared you have worked hard believe in that so hope this tips for the last minute and then exam day guidelines may help you and then this will allow you to taste the success in the examination at last i want to say all the best for your examination good luck thank you got questions shoot them in the comment section below we will try our best to answer them because your success is our achievement here is a feedback of what students said after the webinar this feedback is like fuel for our growth you all are our secret mantra for biotechnica's huge success you keep us going no matter what we would like to extend our heartiest thanks to all the attendees of the webinar who could spare out some time and joined with for an insightful session on how to crack various biotech entrance examinations we will be back again with more such intriguing webinars in the future too if you have any suggestions please do comment below